Welcome to the Moto IQ Garage. Today we'll be looking at my favorite engine, the Honda K Series. Now I love these engines. Now everyone thinks I'm a Nissan guy, but the K is where my heart is. Where else can you get an engine that can make over 150 horsepower per liter on 91 octane crappy California pump gas? Engines that are famous for making a really good output, naturally aspirated, like the 458 Italia or the GT3 RS, those things make only like 120 horsepower per liter. Uh, the K smokes them all on pump gas, and it does it reliably and not all that expensively. So the basics of our Killer Street K engine is the K24. So it's a 2.4 liter engine that's found in the TSX. Uh, basically, we, we got the, the bottom end, it's mostly stock. We're using the stock crank, which, which is fine, I and mean, we've used these for racing motors, and they've had over a season on them, revving all the way to nine grand, and they hold up just fine. So no need for anything fancy here. For connecting rods, we're using K1 connecting rods. We really like these rods, they're really good for the price point. They're forged from 4340 uh, steel. This is a really high nickel and molybdenum steel. The nickel uh, gives it a lot of toughness, so it has a lot of ductility and can absorb impact and uh, continuous impacts. Just the thing you want for a connecting rod. And the molybdenum gives it high tensile strength. It's a really good alloy. It's used for a lot of higher end cranks and rods, especially for racing motors. Um, one of the unique things about the K1 rod is it uses a near net shape forging. So this means the forging die actually has the hole for the big end punched in it. Now that doesn't seem too significant until you think what happens. If you have the die like that, the grain of the metal actually flows around the big end like a circle instead of going straight like a regular old forged blank. Now this gives it a little bit more tensile strength. The grain is aligned in the direction of the stress and you get distortion that's more even across the bore when the rod's under load. So those are all good things that it's kind of a unique K1 feature. Uh, another thing the K1s have are ARP 2000 bolts. These are some of the best bolts you can get. And bolts are usually the weak point of any connecting rod. Uh, the rod's shot peen for fatigue strength and um, yeah, it's a pretty good rod at a good price. Especially for an engine like this that's uh, not like an all-out record-breaking engine, but one that sees daily use and some track use. For pistons, we're using JES FSR pistons, and we're running uh, close to 12 to 1 compression ratio, which is about the most you can get away with with our crappy gas. Um, sure, in other states, maybe you can get away with uh, a little higher compression when you have 92 or even 93 octane available, but this thing has to run reliably on the worst gas you can get, California gas. The FSR piston is made out of 2618 uh, aluminum. This is a low silicon alloy. It's nice and tough and it's ductile. You have to run a little bit wider piston to wall clearance, so it can be a little bit noisy. The FSR piston is a strut type piston. Uh, what this means is that it's um, basically cut away and kind of cantilevered, so there's no extra material. Um, this gives you pretty small skirts, and you have a lot of material concentrated around the, the pin boss for strength, but everything is pretty minimized and reduced for less weight. Uh, normally, having such a small skirt and reduced contact area could uh, be instability in the bore and wear and noise. But JE has their uh, really good piston cam designs. Everything's remarkably quiet and long lasting. Uh, we really like these pistons for this reason. The rest of the bottom end is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just using regular fasteners here. The K motor has a bed plate bottom end, which is really stiff and rigid. We're running King XP bearings. We've had really good luck with these. They're pretty temperature resistant. They're hard and wear resistant. And the new Pmax coat is really really durable. It's a nanoparticle coating and we've had a few race engines that have quite a bit of hours uh, with this coating. We've taken the engines apart and there's very little bearing wear at all. I mean so the, the bearings have looked brand new. So we're pretty confident in these bearings and uh, we've been using them a lot lately. 
On this engine, uh, we've completely balanced the bottom end assembly with uh, the newer generation of parts with their better machining processes. The pistons and rods are usually very close and they usually don't need to be balanced, but we have them checked anyway. Uh, the crankshaft is usually pretty close from Honda, but we have that checked for balance as well. It's one of the steps we do. In addition to balancing, we WPC treat the crank journals for a reduction in friction, longer life, and more fatigue strength. Another trick we do on the K-motor is we take the balance shafts out of it. Uh, the balance shafts spin twice engine speed, so they create a lot of friction, a lot of heat, and a lot of temperature in the oil. We don't think that they're necessary. They don't really affect the dynamic balance of the engine, but they, they're there to reduce the up and down shaking moment that four cylinders tend to have. So it doesn't really affect the life of the reciprocating assembly. It's mostly for smoothness. Now when you do this, you have to, um, you have to modify the oil pump because um, there's no drive for the, uh, uh, for the balance shafts. So Four Piston makes a kit, which is a modified oil pump, uh, and without provisions for the balance shafts. Uh, the kit's pretty complete. Uh, we WPC treat the oil pump gears for strength and for uh, friction and to reduce oil heating. The Four Piston kit also has this windage tray, which is really an essential thing for good oil control and to cut windage losses. If you left this out, your oil temps would probably go up by about 10 degrees and you'd probably lose about 4 or 5 horsepower. So cooler oil, free power, uh, less oil consumption, uh, less oil frothing and better oil for your bearings. We'll run this thing. One of the things we like doing on our high powered builds is uh, we run, like to run the fluid damper. Uh, this is a harmonic balancer. The uh, inertia ring in there is floating in the silicone fluid. It's free to move completely. What this does is it makes a balancer that is good for uh, not just vibrations in certain frequencies, but uh, the, it also attenuates vibration more with high amplitude vibrations. The higher the amplitude, the more the inertia ring is free to move in the silicone fluid and the more damping effect it has. It's also particularly effective in damping torsional whip in the crank, and that's what actually really destroys your engine. K-series motors sometimes have problems with the chain tensioners, especially like when you're running performance cams with stiffer valve springs that put more stress on the cam drive system. So we're running a heavy-duty tensioner from K-Tune. Uh, this has a ratchet device in it, so it can't collapse, and uh, it's, it's actually a pretty simple thing, so while we're in there, we might as well do it. So the heart of any performance engine build is the cylinder head. Now the K-Series engine has one of the best heads in the business, but you can, that doesn't mean you can't make it better. Uh, for our cylinder head, we went to Drag Cartel Industries, and they have a pretty cool service where you could just send them your core and they send you a fully prepped CNC ported head with uh, all the great internals in it. Um, this is a tremendous time and time and money saver actually because traditionally you send your head to the head guy and it disappears for a couple of years and never to be seen again. But with CNC porting, uh, it's a quick turnaround. Uh, a lot of these heads are in stock. All you do is either pay the core charge or send the core in and there you go. So this head has CNC ported ports and chambers. Uh, that's really good for consistent flow through all the ports and consistent volume in every combustion chamber. It has Supertech valves. We have uh, the black stainless on the intake and end canal on the exhaust. Uh, Supertech uh, valve springs and titanium retainers. Uh, all the cool parts. Uh, the head's held on with ARP studs uh, so we get good head sealing. And also the valve guides and valve seals are made by Supertech. The valve guides are silicon bronze and the seals are a special high temperature seal. Like I said, like the cylinder head used to be what took the longest in building an engine and Drag Cartel takes all that stress off of you. For camshafts, we're running the Drag Cartel Stage 4. It's a brand new cam on a new billet. We've had really good luck with this cam. It's basically designed for endurance, so for road racing and that kind of use, uh, track days, where you spend a lot of time at high RPM. 
This thing's designed to not stress out your valve train and not beat the heck out of your valve seats. Um, it's probably the biggest cam you can practically run for um, daily driving. It has a smooth idle, a uh, good low end, good low end throttle response. It just keeps on pulling all the way to nine grand. One of the best all around cams, I think. I, I'm a big fan of it. For an intake manifold, we're running a good old stock Honda RBC manifold. This is a Japanese market manifold off of a higher output K motor. It works really good on a modified K motor here. It has bigger, shorter runners and a bigger plenum. Uh, there's aftermarket manifolds, but for all around use, especially on a car that gets driven on the street, this thing probably has almost no downside. Like it gives you a lot more top end and doesn't affect bottom or mid range at all. In fact, it has more mid range too. Plus it's cheap and you can just buy it at Honda. Uh, great deal, it's kind of sleeper. I guess Honda guys all know about it though, so it won't fool them, but can't beat the factory sometimes. For a throttle body, we're running a K-Tune 72 millimeter. Um, it's a nice big throttle body, bolts right on. For a naturally aspirated car, you don't need one of the big overkill 90 millimeters, but this flows enough and gives you good throttle response. Since this thing is big and we don't want to grind the hell out of the manifold, we're using this PRL spacer. Spacer has like a taper that matches the, the stock bore of the manifold. Uh, and then it's not quite matching the bigger throttle body, but we'll port this and spare the manifold from a bunch of grinding. So when this engine is completed, we expect it to make about 320 horsepower. We've done it before on a number of different builds. It should be repeatable. It's a really nice, flexible 320 horsepower. It's not pipey or anything. It has a lot of torque. Runs good from idle all the way up. It's a really sweet engine, and the fact that it can do it in 91 octane gas is actually pretty darn amazing. There's nothing really that crazy or trick or extreme on this motor. I mean, that's why we just love K motors, especially me. So if you like this build and you want us to do one of yours, go to MotoIQ.com. Click on the Moto IQ Garage link, fill out the form, and we'll get you a quote. If you like this content, you want to see more motor videos, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and we'll keep doing them. Till next time.